Sometimes Instagram can feel like such a hamster wheel and I think as creators we've all been there it can just get so frustrating at times and you just feel like you're going in circles and not able to figure out what the platform even wants from you. Hi all and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here my name is Shivani and I'm an artist and creative entrepreneur based in the sunny city of Chennai in the south of India. Through my channel I teach you how to improve your skills as a gouache artist and as a creative business owner. So today we're talking email marketing and let's dive straight into it. So firstly, I've seen a lot of creatives be very apprehensive about getting started with email marketing because we tend to think that email marketing is dead, but that couldn't be further from the truth. The fact is that email marketing is one of the best in terms of conversion rates because keep in mind that whoever joins your email list is opting in voluntarily because they want to hear from you and they want to know about your offers and your services. Seth Godin has has a term for this which he calls permission marketing and i think it's just such a wonderful concept because people are giving you permission for you to market to them which is the most powerful form of marketing that there is one key thing to understand about the different marketing platforms out there be it instagram or youtube or any other social network for example you don't own the audience that is on the platform sure they might be following you but at the end of the day you are very much at the mercy of that particular channel's algorithm and if they change their algorithm your reach may decrease which is something we've all been experiencing over the last few months or even years the difference with email is that you completely own your audience once somebody signs up and gives you their email id you have full permission and rights to contact them in any way that you want to even if today let's say you signed up with mailchimp as your email service provider let's say uh, mailchimp changes tomorrow and you no longer like the platform you can take all those email ids and go elsewhere but you own the audience and that's the beauty of that I I know that there are a lot of people who do marketing purely through email but if you ask me I would say that it's good to have a multi-platform sort of approach to it so definitely it's good to have some kind of social network that you're on even if not posting regularly but you can use that to build your email list and then you can use email to nurture your audience i personally use instagram regularly but i've learned to have zero expectations from it growth is just very slow on the platform and if you want to perform it involves a lot of keeping up to date with what's going on with the platform and what's trending and trying to participate in that and honestly for an artist or for anybody who's in a creative field that can be very unsustainable because it takes away time which we should be spending on developing our own creative practice and another thing with a platform like instagram is that conversions may or may not happen i think with email even though it requires a lot of patience to grow your list and then make a connection with the people on your list it has huge potential for conversion over time. For me, email allows me to be me. It allows me to connect with my audience in a way that's very authentic to me. And especially if you're somebody who enjoys writing, I would say definitely email is the way to go. But not just writing, it can also be a very visual medium if that's how you want to use it. So if you love Instagram and if it's working for you, by all means, stick with it. Definitely utilize the platform. But I would say regardless, Regardless of whatever other platforms you're using, don't neglect growing an email list because over time that will become your biggest asset. If you're growing on Instagram, that is wonderful. Use that audience there and direct them to your email list as well. Even if you're not sending out emails at the moment, even if you take time to develop your email marketing strategy, definitely collect the leads and you can see what you want to do with it later on. So the first question people tend to have when I recommend that they collect email IDs is how to do it like how do you collect email IDs and again I've been there uh, as beginners it can be a little confusing to wrap our heads around it but it really doesn't have to be that hard. 
The first thing I would recommend, and I'm assuming that those watching me are some kind of artists or creatives who are potentially um, running an art business on the side as well. Firstly, make sure that you have a website. That is extremely important because again, you need something, you need some real estate on the internet that you actually own, which is not somebody else's platform. So always make that a priority to build out a website, even if it's simple at first. Now, the second thing I always recommend is to just get in the habit of collecting email IDs. Reinforce it to yourself multiple times that collecting email IDs is extremely important so that whenever you have an opportunity, you make sure that you don't forget to do that. So even when I run offline workshops, for example, I make sure that I collect the email IDs of the participants and then put them onto my email service provider. I also use Instagram, Skillshare and YouTube through which I am constantly driving traffic to my mailing list. So I would say even if it's not Instagram for you, even if you're not happy with that platform, make sure you have some kind of secondary platform. It could even be a platform like Pinterest or LinkedIn, depending on what works for you. And before you decide what that platform should be for you, just think about where is my audience at? Where are my people going to be? Where can I find them? And pick your platform accordingly. If you feel that your people are going to be on Instagram, like I said, by all means, be on Instagram. You don't have to put pressure on yourself to always be doing what's trending. You can figure out a sustainable strategy that works for you, but always keep driving people to your email list and forget about the vanity metrics. Don't focus too much on growing your Instagram audience. Let it organically grow however it's growing, but make sure you're directing people to sign up. And if you're on Instagram, just make sure you optimize your profile so that you're adding keywords in your bio and maybe even in your name, like beside my name on Instagram, I've written gouache artist. And the reason for that is Instagram functions as a search engine and they've in fact improved their search capabilities a lot. So when people are searching for gouache or searching for gouache artists, I want my name to crop up. That way I'm making sure I'm found even on the days that I'm not being regular with my posting. So definitely think about that. Think about search engine optimization for Instagram. Do these simple hacks so that you're able to find an audience even when you're or not being completely regular. Another thing that could be a good idea is to have a blog on your website. If you're again somebody who's interested in writing, then you could be sharing your own thoughts and insights through a blog. You could be sharing tutorials through a blog and through SEO, it will grow your email list over time. Just make sure that you're being strategic and placing calls to action at the bottom of every blog post that you create. Just mentioning to people that they can sign up for your mailing list. But if you're going the blog route, I would say just be extremely patient because it takes a lot of time to really build up traffic to a blog. And the other option is to create lead magnets, which we'll discuss a little later in this video. So stick around for that. So how will people find your email list? Like I said, optimizing your bio on a platform like Instagram is always a great idea. People might discover you at any point of time and make sure you have a link in bio that directly them to your mailing list among other things. That way there will be traffic coming in steadily even if you have a small audience. And if you really want to push growth through just your website, uh, assuming you really don't want to be on any other social media platform, then I would say develop a really strong lead magnet Focus on your SEO, that is your search engine optimization so that people who are searching for similar topics discover you through Google very easily. But also you could possibly run Google ads with a very small daily budget just so you're pushing a little extra traffic. Now, I don't normally recommend that to creators who are just starting out. You may not want to spend that money, but if you have no other online presence than your website, then it might be a necessity. Now, the next question I get asked is when to start emailing. So how big should my list size be for me to start emailing people? Honestly, just start off with friends and family, just collect 
20, 30 email IDs from friends and family who are just interested in what you're creating and start by just mailing them. Think of it as a test run before you start mailing your actual audience. So it gives you a bit of practice on your communication and writing your subject lines and things like that. So that when your audience is building up, you've already got some practice and you'll be better at it. So yeah, there's really no minimum. My current list size is about 200 or 250 subscribers. And I started sending emails when I was just at about 30 subscribers. So just start, no harm. <laughs> Okay, so the next big concern, what do I even put in my newsletters or my emails? What do I write about? Why would anybody want to hear from me? This is always a source of confusion, especially when anybody's just starting out with their emailing journey, but it really doesn't have to be. You can keep it really simple. You can make your email list whatever you want it to be. You can state your purpose upfront, telling people that when they subscribe, this is what they can expect to hear about from you. For example, this creator I follow called Vanessa Lau has this amazing newsletter that she sends out every week called Confessions of a Content Creator to CEO, where she shares a lot of her learnings um, about being a content creator and running her business. And it's just packed with a lot of value and it's very candid. Did. So it really helps me connect with her as a person. Ali Abdal has a newsletter series called Sunday Snippets where he just shares a little bit of wisdom about productivity and what he's up to and what he's reading, which is what people love hearing about from him even on his YouTube channel. So those are just a couple of examples where it's very um, clear what their purpose of their newsletter is. For you now that could be studio updates from your art studio, it could be life updates, it could be just any new paintings that you've created that you want to put out um, a new collection or anything of that sort as with any other platform I would highly recommend that you don't niche down or stick yourself into a particular box too early my newsletter goes out weekly and I talk about everything that I'm passionate about be it art or running a business and productivity because those are the things I talk about on my other channels as well and it's what people like hearing about from me now what platform should you start off with if you're starting an email newsletter? I've tried out three different platforms that is Klaviyo, MailChimp and ConvertKit. So I used Klaviyo, I actually started off with MailChimp for my product e-commerce business and it was great for the starting. I think MailChimp is very user friendly, very easy to figure out but I wasn't too happy with it in terms of conversions and in terms of the analytics and everything that it gave me. So Klaviyo was a much better choice for me. But I would recommend Klaviyo only if you are running an e-commerce store of any kind and you can set up a lot of automated sequences on it. It's just a very powerful tool all in all, gives you great analytics. But yeah, it's more focused on e-commerce businesses. If you're an individual creator like I am in the context of my art business which I'm currently running, then ConvertKit is the best option that I've used. I just love its simplicity, I love how it does exactly what I need it to do with absolutely no frill and I highly recommend the platform. I'm leaving a link in the description if you'd like to sign up to ConvertKit. It's completely free to begin with, what I've left is the free link. If you do sign up using my link to a paid plan though it's an affiliate link so just a disclaimer on that I may get a commission with no extra cost to you but I highly recommend the platform because it's just very clean very simple and it also has once you shift over to a paid plan you do have the option to set up automated flows and things like that Okay, so before we close, just a few tips and tricks that might be helpful for you if you've decided to start and if I've convinced you to start your email newsletter journey. The first is decide on a schedule and stick to it. Now, you may slip up a bit in the beginning and that's completely fine. Don't get discouraged. Keep jumping back onto it as soon as you can. I also started off in Jan, but then I missed a few weeks in between because I started putting a lot of pressure on myself. But now I've got into a routine and I send out a mail every Friday and by the way you should definitely check out my newsletter the link is in the description uh, so just stick to a schedule because then people know what to expect from you and they know when to expect you in their email inbox 
The second is give it time. It may take time to build up your list, but if you're consistent with your efforts towards building it, if you keep pushing people towards your email list and showing them what value they can get by being connected with you in that platform, then it's only a matter of time before it picks up. And after a point, it will start accelerating. The next is be upfront about what your audience can expect from you. Try not to be confused about this. Decide upfront, even if it's a little bit of mixed messaging. Like I said, sometimes mine is about art. I inform people about updates such as workshops. I'm doing my new Skillshare classes. So make sure you're telling your audience upfront that these are the topics that they can expect to hear from you so that they know and then they're also eager to check out what you're up to and they can open up your mails. Now let's talk about lead magnets, which is a very interesting topic. I think if you're interested, let me know and I'll do a whole video about that along with a few more advanced tactics such as audience segmentation and automated email sequences. I really love email marketing if you haven't realized already. So I would love to do a much uh, more detailed video on those topics and within ConvertKit, how you can create them i can do a tutorial on that so if those are things you'd be interested in drop a comment and let me know but now let's get back to the topic of lead magnets so what is a lead magnet a lead magnet is basically some kind of freebie that you are offering your audience in exchange for their email id it's that simple and that could be anything ranging from something like a pdf document where you are providing some kind of knowledge that they can't find anywhere else. It could be some kind of tutorial videos. It could even be an audio recording or it could even be a five day email newsletter mini course with some kind of outcome at the end of it. The main thing with the lead magnet is you need to make sure you're providing value to your audience. Otherwise, nobody is going to sign up for it. You want to be able to show them how much value they can derive by taking that free resource from you. And that would make them excited to give you their email ID in exchange for receiving this free resource from you. I have two lead magnets that I'm currently using. So one is a resource that tells you 25 different painting prompts along with detailed instructions on eight of them. So for anybody who's interested in gouache, it's just such a valuable resource because a lot of us get stuck not knowing what to paint. This is a useful resource to have in a situation like that. And if you're new to painting, having those instructions is extremely helpful. And my second resource is a gouache painter's handbook, which just answers every top question I get asked about working with gouache in full detail. It also tells people about what colors I own and how they should go about investing in tubes of gouache of their own. Now, that is something that I wish I I had when I was starting my gouache journey so I knew that it would be very valuable to a lot of people and I was right a lot of people gave their email IDs voluntarily and it's something I talk about in a lot of my YouTube videos which are connected to the topic of gouache and I tell people that they can gain access to that free resource and so a lot of people click on that and leave their email IDs so I know I went into a lot of detail with this I hope it was really helpful for you if you have any qu further questions on any any of this or if I wasn't clear explaining any of it drop a comment ask me questions I would be happy to answer you and if you'd like me to dive deeper into any of these topics in a future video let me know that as well and I'll be sure to do that needless to say I would love if you would subscribe to my email list I've left the links to both of my lead magnets as well in the description if you'd like to check out either of those if you're interested in using YouTube as a platform which I think is great for any artist to get onto if you're fed up of instagram especially youtube is a wonderful platform so if you're interested in doing that and you want to know more about what it's like check out this video right here i think you'll find it very helpful thank you so much for watching and i'll see you guys in the next one bye